Hello everybody. Today I am going to read you a few ghost stories. These are Scottish ghost stories and they're called Ghosts in the Wild. Have a fantastic Halloween everyone. Despite its place in Scottish history, Culloden Moor in Old Inverness Shire can still feel bleak and remote. A melancholy atmosphere seems settled on the heart the heath, making it feel lonesome and brooding despite the presence of visitors and a visitor centre. School children who may be roaming about. It was here of course that the Jacobite Rebellion rapidly came to an end on April the 16th, 1746. Bonnie Prince Charlie's 9,000 tired and hungry Highlanders met an equal number of government troops, most of them professional soldiers under the command of King George II's youngest son, the Duke of Cumberland. In little more than an hour it was all over. The King's forces had massacred the Scots. It is said that anyone of the direct descendant of any of the Highlanders killed at Culloden will be especially sensitive to psychic forces at the site should they visit on an anniversary of the battle. One story tells of a visitor from the United States who riding across the moor on horseback in 1896 experienced an intense vision in which he found himself in the midst of the fighting. He saw and felt himself stabbed in the chest and he tumbled from his horse unconscious. When he awoke he was in hospital. He was told he had fallen from his saddle and had sustained the bruises there was no stab wounds, however. Another incident involved a female visitor to Culloden Moor. She was exploring the area near the Cairn Lake Memorial to the fallen soldier when she noticed that a square of tartan representing the Stuart clan had fallen onto the grass. She began to pick it up, but she lifted a corner and then she saw lying beneath it the corpse of a young man in coarse cut plaid, also in the tartan of the Stuarts. Realising she was witnessing something uncanny, she replaced the cloth and hurried away. Other visitors say they have seen bloody faces of soldiers reflected in the water in the well. A lone highlander, shadowy and clearly not of this world, has also been seen at dusk near the memorial. In contrast to the Battle of Culloden, it was the highlanders who were victorious and the in Perthshire in July the 27th, 1689. On that date, 3,000 Scots saw off William III's troops on the hillside above the pass of the Kelly Cranky near Pitlockery. On 
the night before the battle, one of the Scots commanders, Viscount Dundee, woke up to see a weird red light hovering by his bedside. The red light transformed itself into the figure of a man with its head matted with blood. The spirit indicated Dundee should rise and follow it. And this, with some reluctance, he did. The spirit led Dundee to a window and pointed towards the plain of Kelly Cranky. Then it disappeared. During the subsequent battle, Dundee hesitated over engaging with the English troops marching up the pass. Reluctant, he gave up the advantage of the high ground. The memory of the appearance of the bloody spectre may well have spooked him. Finally, at sunset, he sent his forces, changing down the hill, charging down the hill. It was perhaps as well he did, for the timing couldn't have turned out any better. Within minutes, William III's army was defeated. And the rest of the soldiers went fleeing in terror down the pass. But alas, the bloody-headed spirit of the previous night turned out to have been an ill omen. After all, Dundee had no time to celebrate his victory. As he watched in triumph, a stray musket ball pierced his side and he fell and died. Ever since it is said that an eerie red light has been seen to glow over the pass of Killy Cranky on the anniversary of the battle it is th thought to be the same light Dundee saw in his bed chambers that some people have witnessed. The 1950s, two climbers camping on the Isle of Skye were still astonished to see a host of Highlanders heading across the bleak moorland before them. Their progress was entirely silent. On the following evening, the vision repeated itself, but for some reason, an inexplicable reason, an hour later, they saw more Highlanders. The apparitions have been known as the Silent Ones, and sometimes number as many as 50. On other occasions, two or three Highlanders are seen at any one time. Their noiseless way along skies, narrow lanes or passes across the moors and mountains. Judging by their tartan, these ghosts are from the clan MacDonald and MacLeod. Sandalwood Bay. Sandalwood Bay is one of Scotland's finest beaches. A broad golden arc of sand, but which is usually deserted thanks to its isolation. The bay is also one of Britain's and full of haunted beaches. The ghost of Sandalwood Bay 
is an aggressive one. Indeed, he acts as if the place belongs to him. The first recorded sight was by a crofter and his son who had visited the bay to collect driftwood for the fire. Suddenly, they realised they were not alone on the empty beach. Standing there on top was a big man with a big beard growling at them furiously. They had never seen nor heard his approach. He was apparently a sailor wearing a cap, a black jacket, a black jacket with brass buttons and heavy sea boots. He said to them, leave this beach and leave what does not belong to you. They didn't argue. They dropped the driftwood and hurried away. Well, that's all the stories I've got today. Hope you've enjoyed these. And I'll see you all again soon. Happy Halloween. I love you all. Bye.